Good morning, everyone. My name is Luis Fuentes Montero. You might call me just Luiso. Um, I'm going to talk about DUI, Dias User Interface. Uh, well, before talking about DUI, I would like to introduce to whoever is not familiar with what is DIALS. Um, the acronym Diffraction Integration for Advanced Die Sources is a project uh, I've been working for a while already since 2001. Um, the developers are from mostly from Berkeley, the Berkeley Synchrotron, and in Diamond, and in CIS before also. It's funded by, by started by Biostruck, but now it's funded by Wellcome Trust. And the aim of DIALS is with this modern technology in the experimental area and in the computer area, we need new software to treat our data. Uh, the experiments now grown faster. Uh, you have more images in one in one in less time, and and the computers now use more parallel processing, and it is is need for new program that processes data differently. Uh, so well, that's, that's what was created. Um, the traditional way to run dials is by typing commands in a terminal. That's not particularly attractive for everybody, but it's still the most powerful way to run dials. And that's coming from the, the programmer of the GUI for dials. I still believe common line is more powerful. And dials, uh, these are the more, uh, the most commonly used uh, commands. They are 60 command more, commands more. Uh, those are normally the order to, uh, that a user will follow to process data. And the other commands are mostly for visualization or debugging or some particular cases, uh, some tricky data. So the user imports, finds, spots, index, and then refines the geometry, and then integrates, uh, and normally in that order. The, the data structure and the, the objects inside, the, the structure of the processing is sometimes quite tricky, and I'm not willing to explain you all this. Sometimes I get confused with when I see this table. Uh, but my idea is that some, sorry, I need the pointer. Oh, yes, great. Uh, Sometimes the, uh, the algorithms in the refiner are used for indexing or for uh, properly refining. And this is at low level. Uh, also, the user sometimes indexes once and then re-index. There is a command called re-index, uh, which uh, from P1, uh, which is the lower symmetry, uh, the, the uh, way to index uh, goes to more appropriate uh, more advanced way to index, and you go again and again, uh, sometimes in your processing. Uh, this is available, the, something that normally developers take into account. And now let's talk about users and different ways to run dials. The lower level programmers is use the API, understanding the previous uh, slide. Uh, this is the way you control the most, the, Every single bolt and nut of your processing, not recommended for users. Uh, for, pro for users, the, the easiest way to control everything will be using command line tools, the one I told you two slides ago. Uh, then there is Dewey, what I'm going to talk about today. It's a graphical interface for controlling dials. It's, it's the way you control the most from a graphical way. And there is CIA2, which is a command line again, but it's a, a way to let the computer make all the decisions for you. So despite not being a GUI, it's still the highest level way to control dials, to, to run dials. You just run one command, and CIA2 will make decisions for you, will iterate, will try again, do comparisons of different ways to do. You just leave it hitting the room there for you, and go back after lunch, and it will tell you the results. But you didn't make any decisions when you run CIA2. With Dewey, you can control a lot. We, we aim to make Dewey 
capable to control as much as a command line. But um, it's not easy. I will tell you about doing now. So what is doing? By coincidence, has the same acronym as drive under influence, like drinking and driving. But no, it's not recommended. I don't want to recommend that. Nobody to do drink and drive. It's a bad thing. Do doing dials user interface, which looks like this. Um, so I will start describing doing starting from the visualization area where do it tells you how things are going and then I will talk about how to control the process of integrating your data. Okay, let's start with the embedded image viewer. Um, this image viewer it behaves similar to Google Maps. You drag and it moves the image, you use the scroll and it zooms. And it's also very similar. Actually, the first idea came from dials, image viewer, which you will see soon. Um, and it has some tools for controlling the contrast. You move this slider and this, these two sliders, and you put the maximum and the minimum of how to put the contrast on your image. They do not, they do not uh, transform your image. They transform the way you see it in the viewer. Uh, so I repeat, this area here is for visualization. Here will be controlling. Um, the image viewer puts on top of it, on top of your image, it puts the result of whatever step you are running of uh, dials. If you see these rectangles here, they are the output of fine spots uh, step. Uh, the, in the previous one, if you see there are no rectangles here, rectangles here, and after spot finding, it puts the rectangles the result of spot finding. If you continue processing, and you will continue seeing stuff here. For example, after indexing, the first indexing it does is in P1, it puts million indexes in all the results, the result of spot finding, all the spots that were found in the first step. It, if it was capable to fit a crystal into your image, into your, yeah, into your experiment, it's able to, to put million indexes, indexes in your spots. Uh, and for example, a couple of spots don't fit this model and they are red, they don't have mirror indexes. The image viewer tells you that. Then you continue processing, you do finer processing, you re-index. You can see that P1 is not the best one, and it should put different mirror indexes. Unless after re-indexing is the same metric and the same orientation. But this happens pretty frequently that after indexing and re-indexing, you have different mirror indexes and different metrics shown in the Info panel. Then you uh, you can see in the image viewer either observations or predictions. The predictions are available after indexing all the subsequent steps because DIOS runs. Uh, sorry, DUI runs uh, whatever step you run and also runs two more commands: runs DIOS dot predict, DIOS dot report. I will talk about dials.report later, but dials.predict it from the model of your already indexed crystal and your experiment is capable to, to, to predict where are going to be the reflections uh, without looking at the image. And you can see predictions shown in crosses instead of rectangles. With the predictions, you, you can see, for example, if why this refraction was not predicted, this one here. It, it's, it's the first place you should look normally. The, in the image viewer, you, there is a lot you can see. For example, the predictions are missing spots. In the indexing, it, it messed some, some spots. Then when you do integrate, it shows you the entire rectangular area that was needed to do 
integration. And for integration, it needs bigger area to calculate the background, and then uh, closer to the center, the area to do the proper integration. It, it needs to subtract the background. It shows the entire rectangular area used for integration. You can see, for example, this thing, again, was not integrated, and this is an empty area. Why is that? And it shows you all the debugging tools you need, or, or most of some of them. Uh, well, the image viewer is not the only tool you can run. Actually, the image viewer, Dial's image viewer, which behaves differently, but shows you more tools that we still don't have on doing. Both commands in uh, the external tools, the image viewer and the residual lattice viewer that I will talk about later, is connected to the position where you are in your processing step. The image viewer has, for example, a tool that we still don't have on Dewey, we're planning to add it soon, um, masking in your image. You can tell dials, don't take into account this area, where is the beam stop and the holder of the beam stop. Don't use it for spot finding. You can do from image viewer, put the mask, then you save it, oh yeah, save mask. And Dewey will pick up the result of this mask and will use it for the next step, in this case, a spot finding. The another tool, the typical lattice viewer. It would, the same way it pops and it's connected to the position where you are on the processing of your, image, of your images. The reciprocal lattice viewer, uh, actually both, reciprocal lattice viewer and image viewer were there before Dewey. So they are very nice tools and I, I need to put them here because they are needed. Uh, in the case of the reciprocal lattice viewer, it, if, if it knows your experiment and where, where the spots in the image is capable to convert to reciprocal lattice. And it shows in a 3D animation, OpenGL 3D animation, um, the reciprocal lattice of either your spot in, uh, in the image or, or your predictions uh, in the image. Uh, it also lets you choose how many images. I am reducing here, if you look at here, how many so that is the depth in images. How many images I'm taking into account? Let's say you only have the first image. You only have a little shell in the reciprocal, the first shell in the reciprocal lattice. Uh, reciprocal lattice. And if you take the first 15 image, in this case it's 90 degree, 90 images and 90 degree, a degree per image in this data set. If you, oh, sorry. The first 15 images, uh, you, 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 you collect already 15 degrees in the reciprocal lattice, and 15 more, and more, and more. You build your reciprocal lattice, your, all the spots in your in reciprocal space while you collect images. And you can see them here. It's a nice tool for seeing anomalies. If, if for example, your beam center in the header of your file is moved, your reciprocal lattice viewer will show instead of a line uh, suppose it will show curves or bananas in your reciprocal lattice. All these features I'm showing here will look a lot better when I do a demo. For example, I cannot run a reciprocal lattice viewer here. I will strongly advise you to go tomorrow to my lunchtime bite. I will run this tomorrow. Um, so yeah, if you run a reciprocal lattice viewer, and you also have the log text. This is what you will see if you were running dials in a command line, the output in text, uh, all the other tools are showing information, but if something is, or if you want to, or if, if, if it's here already, you don't need to see the other ones. Um, this is the way we, we used to see before this GUI, the output of our commands. We see it in, in this log text, and it's available here in Dewey too. Um, the next tool I'm going to talk about is the report view, and you will see it looks like this one. One of the, the, the reports is another command that runs Dewey automatically after every step, dials.report, which generates an HTML file with a lot of graphical information about your 
processing. And in this case, it's showing a graph of uh, how many spots were found per image in the find spot step. If you go down to index, it shows you how many spots were indexed. Oh. What happened? It shows you how many spots were indexed after indexing. If, if it's about half the spots, it's not great. You should still look at the image, but it's not catastrophic. If it's only less than a third of your image, then you should be worried. You should go back and try again, for example. Um, there are more graphics to show in the report. Uh, once again, if you go tomorrow to the lunchtime byte, you will see them more there. Uh, another graph, um, so the residuals, the difference between the model and the, the, spot, in, uh, the, the spot that was found in the image in a graph, uh, after indexing, it looks like this. After, after refine and re-index, it looks a bit sharper. Uh, something you should look at. Uh, if it looks a little bit wide, it's, it's not bad. If, the, if there are two Gaussians, for example, and they are more than a pixel or two away, then you should worry. Um, there are more, uh, more to, to see in the report view, but... Uh, well, once again, go tomorrow to the lunch time by. Um, why is this moving? My head is too big. Okay. So um, now that I'm going, I'm going now to the control bit of the GUI. Um, I believe the only point where today is already the GUI more powerful than the command line is in this tree. Thing. It lets you try as many times as you want every, any one of the steps. Um, the user should process data, and any time it's able to fork. If the user clicks retry, it forks the tree and lets you try the step you, you, you just did. And I want to encourage people to look at the, image, the images, and if something doesn't, is not okay, Go and retry, change the parameters. Here the, the user edits the parameters that are going to be uh, put to, to the step and run it again. And then it, it should show different results. And all the visualization tools will update and will be connected to your position in the tree. So you can fork as many times as you want. You can try several ways. All the steps, if you click retry, it will fork, except Reindex. Reindex will show you a table that you just automatically put, pops a table, you reindex in that in the, in the table, and it forks for you uh, with this new Babai uh, settings. And you can you can continue trying. It will show depending on wherever you are on the tree, and you can fork any one of the steps as many times as you want, and it it should uh, keep up to date. Um, if something fails on, the, on this tree, it's my responsibility to fix it, and you should complain. There is a place where you, where you can put issues or put suggestions, not only complaints. Um, the project is in GitHub, and in GitHub you can also have uh, issues to, as a user. It's not only to put code there, uh, and you can, it, it's a, the right place to ask for questions. You can also email me or contact me personally, or ask the guys, guys. They will also ask me. Uh, yeah, I think it's time to give credit to who is doing. Um, my DUI is useless without dials there. So I need to thank all the people who developed dials. I only did two algorithms in dials, and they are not even running by default. The rest of dials, which is a big project, was done by my colleagues at Diamond and CCTV4, and Dials uh, relies on CCTVX, which were developed by the, the people at Berkeley, and we still today are learning from the people with more experience in Cambridge, the people who developed Mofim and RefMac, 
Uh, by learning from them, we consider them also contributors to our code. Um, by the way, uh, there are more people who continue helping. I apologize to all the people that I forgot to mention here because I also have a feedback and also code contributors that are not formally part of the team. Uh, where the money comes from? <laughs> Dials is funded by, it started with um, by Stroke X, but now it's funded by Welcome Trust and CC4. Uh, I, I'm get pay, I am get paid by CC4 and Diamond. The Berkeley Lab is, is paying the, CC, the people who did CCBX and also the west uh, side of Dials. Uh, am I forgetting anything? Once again, I apologize if I forgot to give credit to somebody. Thank you. Mm -hmm. yeah.